up to this point, we spent a lot of times talking about light bulb technology. Well, the technology is the same when we apply it to sensors and uh, controls used by the PCM. They can use the same fault pattern diagnostics. When we have a combination of diagnostic trouble codes that are present, we may be looking at something we could use fault patterns for. Now, you will need to work a little harder if you're using a multi-page diagram, sometimes four, five, six pages long. But it will help if you use the fault pattern diagnostics we've been using with light bulb technology right along. Let me show what we're talking about. This is the type of diagram we see. This is one of five pages for a particular vehicle we're working on. Yes, it's a lot of things, and we can't use it for this class because we can't read any of the writing. But if we used our red lines and highlighted all the things that are wrong, it will take us back to the same place. Let me demonstrate how that would work. We modified our diagrams. And as a training aid, we have redrawn some of the diagrams to demonstrate how fault pattern analysis works with engine controls and engine control grounds. These diagrams will help identify common areas that can be used with fault pattern diagnostics. But the same principle works with the five-page programs. Let's take a look at this. Here's a typical ground distribution for pin 41. Ground for the oxygen sensors and the transmission speed sensors are all on one. Do you have codes for high voltage readings on turbine shaft speed sensor, output shaft speed sensor, oxygen sensor, one oxygen sensor two, or one, 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 two, and two, two? If you do, you may be looking at a problem on pin 41 here. This works with the same technology the light bulbs did. It's not a lamp, it's a sensor, it's an output shaft speed sensor, but the principle is exactly the same. Let's take a moment to look at another example how this could be. Are there codes for a fuel tank pressure sensor voltage being high and the throttle position sensor voltage being high? If you have these codes, again, it may be a combination of problems on pin 58. If you had a bad connection at pin 58 and had high voltage, both these would read high. Let's go look at what this looks like inside a PCM. There are two types of grounds used by an ECM, PCM, ECU, whatever name you want to call it. First, we have signal grounds. It's low current grounds for sensor signal returns. Look how small that trace is on the printed circuit board. That happens to be a ground for signal return. It goes out to all the different sensors out there, particularly maybe this is pin 58 or 41 we're just looking at. It's going into the processor and showing a signal return. On the outside of this printed circuit board, we have power grounds, big, wide traces. There are large grounds to carry higher currents. That's where we carry currents things for like injector controls, solenoid controls, coil ohm plug controls. Just like in wiring, we need big layers of copper on this circuit board to carry high currents. We've found quite often somebody has installed an aftermarket device, found a convenient place to get ground, hooked it in. When they hooked it into it, they hooked it into a small trace for a signal ground, overload it, and burned it out. We once had the car from hell, these guys called it, because it kept blowing computers. We found out someone had wired in an aftermarket device and was overloading the sensor ground. That's why the computers kept going bad. Be careful what you hook in to signal grounds. They're not high current grounds. So we can have this open. And when they open, we need to talk about the failure pattern. This is important. We have a specific failure pattern for an open signal return. All sensors that use the sensor return will indicate 5 volts in scan data if this ground is open. It removes the reference, and we don't have anything to read. Power grounds usually open because of poor connections. They'll indicate battery voltage when it's measured back to battery negative. And we'll show you how to do the two of them. Here's looking at what we're talking about. What we'll be doing is be measuring from battery negative with our negative lead, the black lead, and we'd be measuring to the connector connected to this large trace on our PCM, ECU, whatever. The actual problem is shown up there on the left. We've got a broken ground. We read battery voltage, 12.58 volts. This is a case study we had a while back where we actually found this problem where someone had, had a lot of problems go wrong after they'd done a repair. If you'll notice the break up there on that actual problem where the wire is broken off the stud, you'll see it's a fresh break, shiny metal. 
Let's talk more about other things we'll be looking at here. The signal return grounds are very important. As we said before, there are small traces on the circuit boards for low current sensor signals. An open circuit is easy to locate because scan data shows 5 volts on all the sensors that use that ground. A high resistance ground requires more detailed diagnostics. They won't be the same voltages, but you're going to see the same pattern. Everything will be off the same amount. You won't be able to get zero. High ground voltage is return will cause sensor voltage to read higher than normal. So be careful of this. Look at a zero starting spot. We can talk about that. Diagnostics require good specifications because a slightly higher voltage may not be high enough to set a code. Keep that in mind. We've seen that a number of times with problems that didn't set a code because we had high grounds, but it wasn't quite high enough to set a code. You need good specifications. What's normal? This is a power ground. It carries high current switching, like we said, solenoid injectors, coil on plug units. That's where we're talking about power grounds. They're usually bad connections. The signal returns, that's our small one. You've seen the inside of the computer. Now you're seeing how they're showing up differently here. Let's talk about an open signal return and see what happens. As we said, it's going to cause sensor readings to be too high. There is no zero reference. Use a scan tool to identify these. Map output is reference to sensor return. Right there, you see the map input airflow is above, and map return is right there below it. The intake air temperature uses a shared signal return as well. Different than the MAF, E58 for the signal return, B42 for the mass airflow return. High ground voltage readings for the sensor will cause an increase in voltage signal. The readings will be too high. Let's see what that looks like. These are the specifications we've developed for Ford. We're going to be utilizing this because it helps us out. Remember, what we're looking for is bad readings caused by a bad return. If the return is bad, we cannot get a near zero reading or zero volt reading in scan data without having a good ground. So we use something like this as a checkpoint with the engine off. It's a quick check of the ground return. But remember, the ground return from the mass airflow sensor is not as the same as it is for the inlet air temperature just above it. Here's the inlet air temperature on pin 58. It's sharing its re ground return with camshaft position sensor 1, camshaft position sensor 2, O211, engine oil temperature sensor, power steering pressure sensor, and fuel rail pressure sensor. All of these would be wrong. If we had, again, codes for these sensors that said their readings are too high, look for a bad ground. If the code said the readings were too low, we have a problem with the 5 volt supply. The power steering pressure sensor may use something different. Depends on the vehicle. So use the same patterns we've been working with before when we see things go wrong. A bad ground would raise the zero point of all these signals and cause them all to be wrong at one time. Look at this. Here's a situation of an open ground return inside the PCM. Intake air temperature reads 4.98, which is the same reading we have just above it for the voltage regulator supply for the 5 volts. The EGR, delta pressure feedback sensor, reads 5 volts. The manifold absolute pressure sensor reads 5 volts. The fuel rail temperature sensor reads 5 volts. And we have eight trouble codes. Eight trouble codes at one time is a flag. We have some kind of pattern. If you go back and draw these and say, okay, voltage is too high. Voltage being high is caused by a bad ground. Voltage being too low would be caused by a missing 5 volt reference on these sensors. So if they all were reading low, map out the map and see where they take you back to with 5 volt reference. If all these read are high like they do in this case, map it out and see what the common point is. In this case, you'd find it all going back to the same signal return ground. So how would we check that? We come in here, pin E58, we hook it in and go to battery negative. If we read high voltage, we know it's bad. Now we're going to read 1258 because look at the bottom. At the bottom, our power ground is open. So the ground returns are used for the computer. The power grounds are used for the entire ECM ECU. Our injectors won't work. Our solenoids won't work. Our coil and plug won't work if it's a Ford or Chrysler type thing where the PCM acts as the injector ground or 
acts as the coil and plug ground. So this would be easy to locate. When you go, and this is a point we make, go out and find an easy to locate point like IET ground, mass airflow ground, map ground. If you read battery voltage, you've got it open. Now, the only question is, is it a bad ground at the engine, bad connection at the PCM, but it's the main power grounds. It'll show up here as 12 volts. So the power grounds, as you see here, are shared as well. We share the heated crankcase vent, the charge motion uh, control valve, that's the manifold tuning valve, the MAF power ground, the mass airflow uses a high current a heater to heat up an element to measure the airflow. It's got an open. The clutch pedal switch for a manual transmission is open. So we've got a lot of things open along with the PCM. Again, when you go back and look at schematic, you've got a failure pattern telling you that G103 is missing when you see a situation like this. So here's our summary. The point we've tried to make is the techniques we've used for lighting also works with other circuits. And our other classes are going to do patterns that are a little more complex, but they're going to use the same concepts. We're going to try to give you a whole series of classes. This one is specifically for electrical circuits. You've seen how it works. When you use it, I think you'll find you'll be very productive.